Hello everyone, welcome and welcome to this presentation of what to do once you're in the trade. Now I'd like to start off by asking you this question, has this ever happened to you before? Here's an example of something that happened last year that I think is very common to a lot of traders. Let's say your strategy, whatever it's based on, generates a signal. Now in this case, it could have been based off the news. The LA Times reported that the Fed hikes key interest rates for the first time in nearly a decade. Okay, so that news comes out, and let's say that your strategy is contingent on whatever the news comes out, especially with interest rates. So as we look at a, a chart of the Dow Industrial Average right here, here's when the news came out. And as you can see, the market had been heading higher, so you believe this is very bullish, this is positive. So you decide to jump in and buy. So let's say you bought once that news came out at the end of the day, and look what happens. It goes straight down, right? So perhaps you got out, you got a little scared and you got stopped out or you uh, bailed ship and exited the trade with a loss. And then two days later, you're right back up to those old highs. Does this look familiar to anyone? This probably happens to more traders than you think. And it's basically the, uh, the, the basis for which most traders trade is because they have no real set plan or methodology. So welcome to this presentation. We're gonna help you get through scenarios such as this. My name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading. If you're new to my presentations or to Specialist Trading, you will find out that we are all about educating you as a trader. The main reason we want to do this is we feel that most traders give their power away by relying on someone or something else to tell them how and what to trade. I mean, think of it. Look at your own trading. Do you have to first wait for a news event to come out in order to decide how you want to trade or some type of announcement or economic indicator? Do you have to go to a, a chat room or a trade room or a signal service each and every day in order to find out what to buy or sell? Or do you have to see someone on TV or in a blog to find out what their ideas are in order for you to make a decision? This is basically giving your power away. You're relying on someone or something else to tell you how to trade. And in my nearly four decades of trading, I have found that this is really a recipe for a disaster. I think it's one of the main reasons why traders fail is because you're not putting the power in your hands and making your own trading decisions. Now, I've been trading for nearly 40 years. I started my trading career on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the floor for 16 years, and nine of those years I was a specialist. That's where you get the name specialist trading. A specialist was simply a market maker who made markets in roughly about 50 stocks. So if you wanted to buy or sell a particular issue, you went to the trader who specialized in that. So I did that for roughly nine years. I traded through the crash of 1987. I made markets during that period. And I traded through the bull market that followed. I left the floor in the mid-90s to manage money and to pursue my own trading. And about eight years ago, I teamed up with Pro Trader Strategies. They're my sister site and we formulated specialist trading, where all I do is teach and mentor all of our students around the world in uh, virtually over 110 countries around the world and in every state in the United States, all the things that I've accumulated in my nearly 40 years of trading. So I know what works in terms of consistency and I know what doesn't. So that's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to promise you the magic key to, to unlocking the markets and making thousands and thousands of percent uh, every month. We don't believe in that. We're just trying to supply you with sound fundamental education that has stood the test of time. As you'll see today, this is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to get, be giving you uh, some great, great uh, consistent techniques so that you can apply these to your trading and hopefully be able to turn your trading around for 2017. But before we begin, as always, I'd like to ask you to please view our disclaimer. We are required to show you this. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results, a lot of charts using these techniques I'm going to be revealing to you today. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated. Once again, we are required to show you this. So as you're taking a brief moment to view our disclaimer, I would also like to take this time to invite each and every one of you to follow us on Twitter. There's our handle right there. If you'd like to copy that down, it's at S-P-C-L-S-T-T-R-A-D-G, abbreviation obviously for specialist trading. And each day I post uh, different things, anywhere from signals that our strategies have generated to uh, little bits of wisdom along the way. So lots of great free information to follow us on Twitter. Okay, so as I stated just a few minutes ago in the opening statements, we are first and foremost an educational company. Even though we have strategies and we have techniques that generate signals, 
It's not about force feeding you signals and telling you what to buy or what to sell on a daily basis. We only do this for educational purposes. So as you see here, my goal is not to trade for you the way so many other websites and educators do. My goal is not to tell you what to buy and sell on a daily basis. My goal is to teach you how to trade with the specialist edge. This is the same edge that turned my trading around 40 years ago, starting next year. OK, because believe it or not, I went through the same thing that probably most of you may be even going through right now. I struggled tremendously in the very beginning of my career. In fact, I didn't think I was going to be on the floor much longer because I was doing everything I had been taught. I was going to all the seminars. We didn't have webinars then. There was no Internet, but we had seminars. I was learning all about support and resistance. I was learning all about Fibonacci. I was learning all about candlesticks. And guess what? Nothing worked in terms of consistency. Sure, it would work every once in a while. You know, every once in a while, I get a great Elliott Wave trade, and then I'd give it all back, you know, on the very next trade. So what we're trying to instill and what we do with all of our students around the world is instill consistency because consistency is really what it's all about. Not, you know, some million dollar system that generates millions of dollars a year. We don't believe in that because you can just as easily give it back. In fact, when I was on the floor, I knew lots of guys who made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in a relatively short time. And guess what? They all gave it back. In fact, not one of those traders is trading anymore because they've given everything back. So it's not about some master system that can generate thousands of percent a day. You know, we don't believe in that. It's about educating yourself so that you have this consistency in your trading and you're making your own decisions so that you can be trading 10, 20, 30, even 40 years down the road. That really is the meaning of success. So as you can see here, my goal is not to force feed you signals. My goal is to teach you how to trade with the specialist edge. Hopefully you'll come on board, become a student of mine, and you'll start 2017 on the right track. Now, today I'm going to be sharing with you some great, great ideas, some great things to add to your trading. So you'll see our sincerity and how much we really devote to teaching you because we're going to give you a lot of free things today. Now, just like a classroom, I love to take questions from my students, but please remember that I have a lot of information to share with you today. So it kind of bogs down the presentation if I stop every five minutes for a question. So if you have a question, kindly wait till the very last 10 or 15 minutes of our presentation, and I promise I'll reserve that 15 minutes for uh, any questions you may have. I will answer the one question that is the most popular, and that is, is this being recorded? Yes, it is. We record all of our webinar. So if you have to leave early or if you're having technical difficulties, uh, we will send you a link to this. Pro Trader Strategies will send you a link. Okay. So if you happen to join us late, please wait till the very end of the presentation, probably just in about a half an hour from now. All right. So let's begin. Now I'd start, uh, I'd like to start out by uh, telling you the number one question you should never ask because believe it or not, most traders ask this question. And this is just uh, shows and represents how much difficulty traders have. And the one question you should never ask anyone or even yourself is, what do I do now? The sad thing is, if you look back, I'm sure most of you, I know myself included when I was struggling, I used to ask myself, oh boy, this is great. Now I got myself really into a quandary. Now what do I do? What do I do now? And basically what you're telling the markets and your fellow traders is that I have no idea what to do. I shouldn't be trading. I don't know what to do now. I mean, can you imagine? This is your hard-earned money. You've saved a lot to trade. You've put a, a lot aside. Perhaps you have a dream of one day doing this as a profession or maybe, uh, you know, having that, uh, you know, maybe dream house or that dream car you've been waiting for, a dream vacation. And now you're in a trade and you're thinking, what do I do now? I mean, can you imagine a, uh, you know, a brain surgeon being right in the middle of a surgery and saying uh, to the other uh, doctors there, well, now what do I do? or someone in the middle of a uh, uh, of uh, flying a plane, you know, with passengers on board and then looking to the co-pilot and saying, what do I do? Or a lawyer right in the middle of a trial looking to the other attorneys and saying, what do I do now? It's no different from trading and this is your hard earned money. But I would say the majority of all traders say that at one time or point to themselves right in the middle of a trade that has not worked or they just did the wrong thing and they say, boy, what do I do now? So that's the one question you should never ask. Go back and look at your trading. Have you ever said that to yourself? Okay. It's basically telling the markets, I shouldn't be here. Now, there are only four questions you should ever ask. And these are the four questions that I believe will get you on the road to consistency. Remember, it's not about having a million dollar system. 
There's tons of traders that make money using these systems and then give it all back. So that doesn't mean anything, but it's about consistency. And these are four questions that will get you on that road. All right, so here's question number one. Am I on the right side of the market? Now, everyone knows this, everyone can you know, think this and go, yeah, well, obviously I wanna be on the right side of the market. But do you ever ask yourself, am I on the right side of the market? Are you getting in too quickly? Are you not really you know, uh, looking at the trade? Let me show you an example here of a, an older chart, MCK. Now this was actually a signal generated by one of our strategies, all right? Now you would be buying right here. Now someone looking at this chart would say, well, you know, we're kind of going sideways. There's no real trend. So uh, according to the strategy, though, I should be buying it. But why would you be buying it? How would you know if you're on the right side or not? The market, the, the bars are not giving you any clue. Here's the simplest but most powerful way that I have found that I learned years ago on the floor from my mentors of finding out whether you're on the right side of the overall trend. And that's by simply adding a 50 period moving average. I don't care if you're trading a daily chart as we see here, or if you're trading a five minute bar chart. I don't care if you're trading currency pairs or futures or commodities, it doesn't matter. It could be a monthly chart of the S&P index, it doesn't matter. But if the majority of price bars are above, and if most especially if your entry is above the 50, then you're on the right side of the market for buying. Now obviously if your entry was below, it would be wrong. You should not be buying anything below the 50. You should be looking to sell because the rules are just reversed now. Now we want to be a seller. But since the majority of these bars are above, and as I said, most importantly, your entry is above, then you're on the right side. It's a good trade. Now it's not guaranteeing that it's going to work out, but you've already put the odds in your favor just a little bit more than most traders. All right. Go back and look at your trades, especially the ones you lost. I can almost guarantee that your losers were because you were buying below the 50 period moving average and you were selling above, going short above. You're out of sync. So you always have to ask yourself, am I on the right side of the market? It's probably best to ask this before you enter the trade. All right. Now that you're on the right side of the market, question number two. Where do I place my initial stop? I'm just amazed at how many new students we have, and I talk to them I, you know, as their mentor, and I ask them about stop placement, and most of them tell me, well, you know, once I'm in the trade, then I kind of decide what I'm going to be doing. And that's silly. That's, uh, you know, like uh, it, it, it's taking too big of a risk. You have to know prior to entry where you're going to be getting out. This is what I do. I know where my exit is if I'm wrong prior to even getting in the trade. So you have to ask yourself, where do I place my initial stop? Now, we're not going to go into all the different stop placement concepts. We have numbers of them in our courses and classes. But let's just say, looking at this trade right here, if we purchase here, the most logical place to uh, uh, put your stop would be right here. Obviously, we hit some type of short-term support there. So if that's where we seem to stop, and plus we're going to be below the 50-period moving average, well, that's where, obviously, if we go down there, we want to get out, okay? Now, what you have to do, though, is not just consider, well, I'm pu putting my stop there. What you have to do is consider how much you're risking, five points. Now, depending on your uh, capital size, is this too much? Maybe you like to trade 500 shares at a time. Are you willing to risk five points with 500 shares? Now, if you risk only or if you're trading only 100 shares, is that better? Or if you're trading an odd lot? Let's say if you're trading a, an option, it's still, that's where you're going to be getting out. Perhaps the option will be, uh, you know, uh, zero at that point, worth nothing. So you have to consider prior to entry, how will the trade change, in my, and most especially my, my uh, capital size change, if I'm wrong and I lose five points. Let's say that's okay with what you're trading, with your capital, and let's say you only trade 100 shares or 200, and you're fine with it. Okay, so it's okay to take this trade. Now we go on to question number three. This is all adding up into your consistency. What is my profit target? Now, most people do the same thing. They say, well, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I'm a discretionary trader and, uh, you know, I kind of go to that chat room and let the guy tell me where to get out. Or, uh, you know, I just feel when the market's gone up too high, that's when I know when to get out. Right? There's no real plan. It's just pretty much just hoping and wishing for it to go up. And then, uh, you know, when you feel if it's gone up too much, well, it's not based on anything. We have to trade with a purpose. And most traders don't trade with a purpose at all. It's just basically like blindly walking down the street. 
If you want to get from point A to point B, you have to walk with a purpose. You have to have a plan. And you'd be surprised how many people do not have a plan. So this is putting some structure into your trading. And this is what's going to get you on the road to consistency. So what is my profit target? Once again, we have numerous techniques and methods for exiting targets, for, for trailing, for having fixed exits, dynamic exits. But here's one of the most basic and we can share with you today. If you're risking, in this case, five points, well, you basically just want to double that because what you're going to be doing is creating a nice risk reward ratio, one to two. In other words, you're, you want to make twice of what your risk is. So if you're risking five, you want to make twice that, which would be 10. This is probably the most standard and basic exit point. It's trading 101. OK, so you know, even prior to entry that you're risking five, you're on the right side of the market and that you'll be out at 10 points. So if you entered at 191, you're out at 201. Very simple. OK, now here is question number four, which is probably the most important. How do I protect my profits? I would venture to say that in trading, probably one of the worst feelings in the world because I know if I, I've experienced it, is to have a winning trade and know that you've been on the right side of the market, you've done everything well, and you're feeling very confident and happy about your results. And then something happens and a few days later, that winning trade is now a loss. So you've given everything back that you made. Let's say you're making a couple hundred dollars, maybe even a couple thousand dollars, and you're feeling great, all right? You're taking the spouse out to dinner, you're gonna thinking about that a dream vacation you're gonna be having, you're thinking, boy, this is great. And then you wake up the next day, it goes against you, but you say, that's okay, you know, I'll hold, you know, hang out, it's going to do all right. And then the next day it comes back to unchanged, and then the next day you're losing money. And now it's like, wow, what do I do? That brings up the first question, what do I do now, okay? So we have to protect our profits because, you know, oftentimes you feel better knowing that the minute you get in and it turns into a loss, well, it just didn't work out. But the worst feeling in the world is knowing that you were right but it didn't get your exit point and then it turned around into a law. So here's a great technique that we give to all of our beginning students I'll share with you. We call it the 50% rule or actually 50% suggestion because it's up to you. So you know you're in at 191, you know you're gonna be getting out 10 points higher at 201. So what we wanna do is measure half the distance of that move, that's 50%. Once price gets up to that level as we track that trade, and remember it doesn't have to be exact, this is not exact science, we give everyone a little room for inter interpretation because once again, you're making the decisions, not us. This is, we're just giving you education so that you can make your own decision. So if it gets close to there or a little above it, that's fine. But once we get roughly around that 50% level, well, your stop is gonna move moved up to unchanged. So if things don't work out, if we never go up to 201, at least you'll break even. To see how these things are all working to be consistent. That's all you have to do. I mean, trading is really not that difficult. It's not, it doesn't have to be a science. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, convoluted logic. It's really simple. We're just listening to what the market wants to do and then we're applying a little structure. We're just jumping on board. You know, we're not trying to pick a top. We're not trying to pick a bottom. We're not coming up with all these techniques for support and resistance or what the institutions are doing. That's silly. And once again, that's making your decisions based off someone else. We're making our decisions based off the only thing we should be, and that's the chart in front of us, the market, okay? So we move our, our stop to, to 50%, and now we know that if it doesn't work out, well, at least we didn't lose anything. We've protected ourselves, and we can start all over, look for another setup. So the only thing left to do after this is just watch the trade unfold. You've protected yourself, you're in the trade, you have your exit point, and now I always say if you are trading correctly, Trading is extremely boring, and that's how you know if you're trading correctly. If you've got 10, 12 screens in front of you, phones going off the hook, two or three TVs in front of you with all different news events and guys talking and all these uh, pundits telling you what to do and tons of information, in my opinion, you're trading incorrectly because trading doesn't have to be that difficult. I have one screen in front of me. I never watch you know, uh, the market news or anything. Most of the time I just listen to music. So the only thing you have left to do is just wait. It's that simple. If you're bored, most likely you're doing it right. So as we watch the trade unfold, we see that in just a matter of days, guess what? We exit with a 10 point game. Very boring, not exciting, not sexy, but that's not 
what trading is supposed to be. Trading is just supposed to be a, a structure or a means in which to follow whatever the market wants to do. Okay. And so we got out at 10 points and it was a good idea because look what happened after that. Okay. The trend change. All right. So that's the basis for what we're trying to share with you. You apply these four things. I really feel strongly that you'll increase your odds for consistency even more. Let's look at another example. Okay. Let's add some more things. Here's an older chart of Tiffany. Now, someone looking at this would say, well, Steve, the chat room I go to really likes this stock. I said, okay, well, why, what, why did the guy in the chat room like it? Or what are the guys all there like it? And they said, well, looking at this stock, we've kind of gone up and down, up and down. But I have a buy signal generated on this last bar. I say, okay, what is it based on? What's your purpose for buying this? Say, well, I like to trade trend lines, okay? And I draw a trend line. I've always learned that trend lines really determine the short-term trend and what you should be doing. So the trend was down, and this is the very first time that we've closed above it. So that's a very good sign right there. Now, on top of that, the earnings just came out, and they're very good, okay? On top of that, one of the guys I watch on TV, he really likes it. And he says this company has a lot of room for growth. And also... It looks like we made a double bottom. The institutions came here. The volume picked up right at these lows. The institutions are buyers, according to the stuff I look at. And this is pointing to all the signs of a really good buy. All right. So I'll say, okay, did you notice that every one of those decisions was based off of what someone or something else was telling you? It wasn't based off what the market was telling you. And they said, no, no, it's based. The market is telling me that, you know, we've, we broke a trend line. We, uh, the market is telling me that the earnings are good. The market is telling me that, uh, you know, the institutions are buying it. I said, that those are other things. That's not the market. And then they'll say, well, how do you know what the market's telling you? And I say, it's simple. It's so easy. It doesn't cost you anything. You have to pay for all these. If you have a charting uh, platform at all, even if you have a free one on the Internet, you can do this. And all you have to do is ask yourself, am I on the right side of the market? And they say, well, how do you know if you're on the right side of the market? Well, that's the number one question. Am I on the right side of the market? You add the 50 period moving average. So if you want to be a buyer, are you on the right side of the market? Obviously not. Okay. I don't care what someone says. I don't care if every indicator you watch is oversold or overbought. If you are below the 50 period moving average, you should only look to sell. If you're above the 50 period moving average, you should only look to buy. Is this going to be correct 100% of the time? Absolutely not. But we're not concerned with that. Remember, I told you in the opening statement, we're only concerned with making you a consistent trader because consistency will, will equal longevity. That will give you the opportunity to be trading 20, 30, 40 years down the road. So we're just trying to instill consistent techniques that probably you've never heard of before or never you know, had the courage to try because they're too simple. All right. So. I tell my students this, most of them don't believe it, but let's see if they had purchased this. Okay, let's say they purchased this and bought. Well, we know we don't want to buy, but had they done it, well, guess what? It would have turned into a loss, okay? And we're not saying that the stock is going to go straight down 50 points. We're just saying that the odds are not in your favor for buying when you're below the 50. They're much better in your favor for selling. Sure, the price will go up when you're below the 50, but that's okay. We're just going to only get the high probability. We want the low-hanging fruit. So had you done this, well, you probably said, boy, well, you know, I didn't know that the earnings were going to be that bad, and, uh, you know, that's why the stock went down. Well, that's funny how we knew not to be in the stock, even not even following earnings. I, I stopped looking at earnings roughly 40 years ago, so I never look at earnings. It's, it's silly. The market tells me what it wants to do, not an earnings report or not some guy in a chat room. So you just would have uh, lost a, a, you know, money here had you taken this trade. But if you learned the things we teach you in our courses, you would have not lost anything. So let's watch and see how this unfolded. Now that you're out of the trade, let's say you took it and you stopped yourself out. Well, look what happens. Now it goes right, right back up. And what most traders will do is say, oh, well, see, I was right. Now I'm going to chase it. Now I'm going to get back in. And what they'll probably do is buy right here. Okay. Because they think, well, boy, if it was going up before, now it's really going to go up. OK, so they'll chase it again, which is still wrong because we're still, for all intents and purposes, below the 50 period moving average. Now, if you're trading with trend lines, there's nothing wrong with that. But look here, the trend line is up. And that what, and what this means is this is the first time we've closed below. So if you want to use this strategy or this method, 
you know, it's not something that I personally use, but let's say you really believed in that. Okay, well, here's a sign to go short. Now you've put the odds in your favor. Why? Because you're firstly below the 50 period moving average. So the odds will be in your favor no matter what strategy you use. Okay, so that's where you want to sell. Now we go on to question number two. Where do I place my initial stop? Once again, there are a number of ways to place your stop in our course, but we'll show you the most common, which is just basically right here. It's above the 50 period moving average and you see we kind of stop there twice. So that would be a very logical place, all right? So we ask ourselves, how much are we risking? Okay, what is my profit target? Firstly, we have to know what our profit target is, but we have to also know how much we're risking. So if we're risking three, our profit target in the most basic way of exiting would be twice that or six points, okay? See how simple this is. This is just simple mathematics. And you see how we're relying on all of this just off what the market has given us? We're taking all of this by where the stop is, where our entry is, based off market behavior, not based off earnings or institutions or convoluted indicators, just what the market's telling us. So we're risking three, we're gonna make six. That's it, okay? Last question, how do I protect myself? What if it starts going in my favor? How do I protect myself? We add the 50% rule or the 50% suggestion. So let's see the trade unfold. Remember, uh, this original trader thought this was a great buy. Well, we're going to keep going up. Well, look what happened, okay? You see how the odds are in your favor with that simple 50-period moving average. Now, the stock fell out of bed once more. It kind of hovered around, and now we're at the 50% level. So what should you be doing? Protecting yourself, because we don't know if we're going to go down to 70. We may bounce back up and then start to go higher. So let's move the stop down to 76. So we know that if it starts to go back up and we're wrong, at least we don't lose anything. So now the only thing left to do is watch. All right, this is the boring phase. This is where you just sit back and there's nothing to do. You don't have to have 10 screens in front of you. You don't have to have TV on. You can just relax, watch a movie, go for a walk, spend time with your family or friends. And as we watch, we see three more days later, we made six points. It was that easy. Now we know that not everyone trades stocks. Uh, say you trade futures, say you trade currency pairs, the same principles apply. We know not everyone's going to short a stock either. It's difficult to short stocks now. So why don't you just uh, purchase puts, you know, or some type of uh, uh, negative spread, whatever you want to do. It doesn't say you have to actually purchase or sell stocks. You can uh, use uh, or apply options. You can apply futures. It's up to you. Remember, I said in the beginning, you have to make your own decision. We just give you all the variables and, and different uh, choices to make. We work with you with the things that make you feel the most comfortable. And then we let you decide in paper trade and see how it fits your style. Okay, that's how you become a consistent trader. Now, these are four great techniques to add consistency to your trading. But guess what? There is even a better way to increase your odds. So if you added consistency with these four separate things, you can increase them even more by adding a great tool that I learned on the floor of the exchange. It's the Pet D. And it's simply a color bar tool. It's a color bar tool designed to, one, confirm your entry signals, and two, keep you in winning trades. So all it does is it colors the bars, either green or red, okay? And if you have a series of green bars, the trend is up. If you have a series of red bars, the trend is down. It's that simple, okay? Now let me show you how to apply it here. Here's an actual signal in HRL. As you can see here, we're just using the, the uh, four techniques that I shared with you today. We entered, we're above the 50 period, number one. Uh, number two, we measure where our stop placement is. We measure the number three, we measure amount of risk, and then we simply apply this as our exit. And we use the 50% rule, but we never had to worry about it because we went up to that point. Now, using those four simple rules I share with you, we made nearly four points in just a little over a week. Okay, very simple, very easy. And then you move on to the next one. Now, what if you really felt though strongly that this is the stock is really going to move higher? A lot of our traders like to, you know, get as much bang for your buck as possible. Here's where the pet D comes in. Let's add the color bar tool. And as you can see, the colors change from red to green. Now here was our signal bar. Here's where we entered and it was green. So the pet D was confirming that it's okay to take this trade. Now, as long as the bars are green, you can do two things. You can, if you have multiple shares, you could sell half of your position using this, 
keep your stop here at unchanged on the second half and then let the rest ride. So what we want to do is sell the very first time the pet D changes the color from green to red. So if we watch it, we see here that the market really did take off. You were right. And even though we had some down days here and there, we stayed green all until here. Here was our very first red day. So we would have sold here and it looks as if the trend is changing. So now on the very first part of our position, we made nearly four points. On the next portion, we made 11. So just about a 15 point gain there combined. So the pet D is great. It confirms your entry. And at the same time, it will keep you in trades longer for those nice big moves. Here's another example. MANH. Okay, as you can see, we are above the 50, but then we cross below. Now here's another strategy. One of our strategies gave a sell signal. All right, we use the same techniques. We sold, we placed our stop where we felt the stop should be. We just doubled our risk and that's our exit. Okay, so we made a quick four and a half points. What if we thought that this was really gonna go much, much lower? Well, let's add the pet D. Once we add the pet D, we see that the colors were originally green, but at this point, even above the 50 period, we started to show that the bars were red. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that the pet D is a very, very sensitive uh, uh, trend identifier. And it's basically telling us that the trend, the short term trend is down. So even though the overall trend here was above, the short term trend is already starting to be negative. All right. So we had our second setup here to go short and it was colored red. So this was confirming from the pet D in order to go short, you need to not only be below the 50 period moving average, but you need that bar to be red. And the trade worked out great. You made four and a half points. What if we want to stay in longer? Well, we continue to track each bar at the close and we will cover at the very first green bar. So let's see what happened. OK, well, so far we didn't have the green bar yet. We made another 15 points to the downside, all because we're below the 50 period moving average and the short term trend identifier, the pet D is continually to color the bars red. You see what a great tool this is. I use this every day on my trading. It doesn't matter if it's intraday or if you're using uh, bar chart, daily bar charts, or if you're using currency pairs or futures, absolutely makes no difference. Let's look at this higher price stock, PSA, all right? The same thing, now you can just barely see the 50 period moving average right here, so we are well above it, all right? Here is our entry and here is our exit. So in just less than a week we made seven and a half points roughly okay not a bad trade in about three or four days not bad but what if we really thought psa was going much much higher all right well let's add the pet d we see here that our buy setup or the bar we went long was colored green so it was confirmed and we continue to be green even after we sold the first half of our position well let's pan out the rest of the trade and even though we had some down days here and some down market days the pet d still colored these bars green until right here, up another 18 and a half points. So you see the value of using this if you're trying to squeeze as much profit as possible. Now, another you know, added advantage, which we're really not focusing on, we're talking more about staying in the trades longer, but many times the best trades are the ones you don't take. Now, remember we shared with you these four components here. Uh, question number one is, Am I on the right side of the market? Well, we want to buy eBay, and yes, we're on the right side because we're above the 50 period moving average, so that's okay, okay? Question number two is where do I place my stop? Well, we placed our stop right here, so we're risking this much, okay? Question number three is uh, where's our exit? Well, our exit's gonna be right up here because it's twice the amount of, this, of the, uh, of the uh, risk. So in other words, whatever amount I'm risking here, we just double it, and that's our exit. And then question number four is, how do I protect myself? Well, here's 50% area. So once we get somewhere around this level, I'm going to move my stop to unchanged. So I'm all prepared. I'm all set to go. Now, using the four things that I taught you today, well, this would be valid. But remember, I said you can increase your odds for consistency because even though those four things I taught you are extremely consistent, they're not guaranteed to give you a winning trade each and every time. Remember, consistency is not... 100% guarantee, it's just two steps forward, one step back, all right? You'll have a couple of good trades, maybe one losing trade, one or two more winning trades, another loss. So how can we increase that even more? Let's add the pet D. And remember, in order for us to go long, we must have our buy bar, the bar we buy on, be green. 
If it's not green, we should not take the trade. This is how we add our consistency. So let's add the pet D. And guess what? The pet D has been red a full two weeks prior to this, okay? So this bar was red. What does that mean? It means we should never have taken that, which we didn't. And look how much it saved us out of a losing trade. That's the beauty of the pet D. It will keep you in trades a lot longer if you're in a winning trade. And a lot of times it will warn you of a trade not to be taken because it's not confirming it. Okay, so before we go to questions and answers, let's review. Here's what you learned today. The number one question you should never ask. Trust me, I've been there before, so I'm not trying to talk down to you or say that you know, you're bad traders. I know exactly what this is like from firsthand experience. I would be doing well for a couple of weeks and think, boy, I've finally gotten back on track. I'm sure many of you may be going through this right now or went through this a number of times this past year. And then you have one or two lousy trades and you've given everything back and you're right back where you started. In fact, you may even be lower or worse off than you started, okay? And every time that happened, I'd say, boy, what do I do now, okay? I just did all the rules right. I studied all the things I learned from the seminar about Fibonacci or about support and resistance or about the institutions and volume. I did everything right and it still didn't work, okay? So you should never ask yourself that. Here are the questions, the only questions you should ever ask. Am I on the right side of the market? Question number one, all right? Now, the way you do that is just apply a 50 period moving average. Now, a lot of you will say, well, Steve, yeah, but I trade five minute bars. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Have a 50 period moving average on five minute bars. If your entry is below, you shouldn't be buying. It's the same principle. It does not matter what time frame. It does not matter what market. It could be currency pairs, monthly charts. It doesn't matter. So remember, if your entry is above the 50 period moving average, then you're on the right side. If your entry is below, you're on the wrong side and vice versa. Question number two. Where do I place my initial stop? Once again, you get a greater idea of how to do this in our courses because we, we have numerous stop placements depending on what type of trader you are. And we work with our traders to you know, pick up one that feels the best to you. But the, the easiest one is just to go at the last short-term low or the last short-term high if you're going short, all right? Once you know where to, and, and this should all be done before you enter a trade because say you say, okay, well, the next, the lowest low is like down 20 points. Well, don't take that trade. I mean, that's a lot of risk. Unless you have a big uh, account size and a lot of capital to work with, don't take that trade. So you just said, you know what, I'm, uh, this is going to add to my consistency because if this happened to be a loser, I would have lost a lot. And this is the way most traders trade. So always know where your stop is before you enter. Question number three, then where do I uh, place my uh, exit. In other words, what's my profit target? If you're using the simple technique we taught you today, it's just double your amount of risk. So that's why it's so important to know where to place your stop, because once you know how many points that is, how many points you're risking, you just double it. And that's your exit. That's trading 101. It's, you know, one to two risk reward ratio. And then lastly, and most importantly, how do I protect my profits? Because nothing is guaranteed. You can follow all four of these questions and still have a losing trade. Remember, we're not promising you a winning system. We don't believe in that. And you should run from anyone who tells you that they have a winning system and never loses. We're trying to show you ways to make you a consistent trader. This is the way professional traders trade. Okay, so they, they don't have all this convoluted logic. They don't have 20, 30 rules. They don't follow tons of indicators or have 20 screens. They just, their trading is very simple. And they're just following one thing. That's the market in front of them. So how do you protect yourself? If you get halfway to your exit point, move your stop to unchanged, protect it. Okay, you don't want to turn a winner into a loser. Now, are all these things designed to make you a successful trader. No, they're designed to make you a consistent trader because most people think a su successful trader means that you're going to be a millionaire in a couple of years. No, we want to make you a consistent trader. And that's different for everyone. Everyone has a different account size. Everyone has a different risk parameter. Now, they're all going to help you in your consistency. If you want to increase your odds with uh, consistency, apply the pet D. I, once again, I cannot stress how important this tool is. I use it on a daily basis. It increases my consistency tremendously, and it's simply a proprietary color bar tool. 
It just tells you the short-term trend. So when the short-term is in sync with the overall trend, you really have added that your odds for success in terms of consistency. All right, so here's today's year-end special. We're at the end of 2016. This is the last presentation I'm going to be giving for this year, and we're uh, you know, going to uh, supply all of our attendees today with a tremendous year-end special. We are discounting this tremendously because we really want – to make you a consistent trader. It, it you know, it, it uh, absolutely has uh, uh, no positive effect if people continue to lose and lose more money. I mean, the, you know, it's not going to affect us. We're still consistent traders, but why should, uh, you know, the markets are so big. Why should, uh, shouldn't everyone be a consistent trader? There's enough for everyone to go around. So why not share what you've learned and try to help other people, okay? Here's what we're going to be sharing with you today. Obviously, we want to offer our most popular package in terms of trend identification, that is the pet D. We really feel it's a roadmap for any market. It's a proprietary color bar algorithm. So all you have to do is, uh, you know, work with uh, our, uh, you can, our tech support will help you set it up and you simply uh, 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 download the, the add-on onto your uh, charting software and it automatically turns the bars either green or red when you apply it. This comes with two continuation trading techniques, two pullback trading techniques, a trailing stop technique. You can apply it to any market, any strategy, any time frame. Remember, it can confirm your strategy, whether you should be taking that or not. All right. Plus, if you want to stay in long, it will help you stay in trades longer. And you get 40 years of mentoring correspondence. Okay. So this is a great, great, uh, unbelievable tool to have in your arsenal. But guess what? As our year-end special, we're not stopping there because I know a lot of you have been saying, Steve, I spent tens, twenties of thousands of dollars this past year buying the perfect system, the perfect method, going to the perfect uh, course, and nothing works. So I don't have a strategy to apply the pet D to. I don't have anything. So we're also going to offer one of our best pullback strategies, strategy number one. If you like to trade pullbacks, meaning that the overall trend is up, but you like to buy on these low uh, sell-off points, this is a great, great strategy to trade, okay? We're not going to end there. We're also offering you our most popular strategy based on pattern recognition, strategy number four. The beauty of this strategy number four works in multiple time frames and multiple markets. It is our most popular strategy to date. But we're not going to end there. We're also going to offer you our candlestick method. It's strategy number five. It's one of our strategies that is solely based off of candlestick patterns. And it's a great, great strategy. Now, you see here, it says stock strategy. It also says forex strategy. But the beauty is these strategies can be applied to any market, any time frame, in any direction. So we're giving you the pet D. We're throwing in three of our best strategies. OK, these are the best strategies that we've ever had in terms of consistency, but we're not going to stop there. We're also throwing in our seven secrets of money management course. This is a jewel in itself because there are there's so much information here. I learned from the trading floor and we provided it in our money management course that is not seen anywhere else. We have detailed instruction, eight videos. We have six different techniques for stop placement. We share with you the RPS method, a method I learned on the floor for determining, accurately determining your position size. So you don't have to guess anymore. You can take the guesswork out. We go over techniques and ways to increase your risk reward ratios simply by adding a few and changing a few different things in your strategy. We share with you, I think the most valuable thing in the, in the Seven Secrets course is the ATM method. It's advanced trade management. We only offer this in our colleges and we're offering this in our Seven Secrets of Money Management course tells you when to trade and when not to trade. And once again, personal correspondence with someone who has 40, four decades of trading experience. So we're offering you our seven secrets of money management, three of our most consistent strategies to date, along with the Pet D. We call this our Pet D complete package. Now, if you purchase these separately, this would cost you tens of thousands of dollars, okay? Normally, what we've done before, we did this once before at the end of last year, I believe, we discounted it down to 78.57, but we're gonna discount it even more. We're gonna drop it 50% down to 34.95. This is our attendee 50% discount package. And we're also gonna add payment plans. So even if you don't wanna come up with 34.95 one lump sum, you can come up with a small deposit and you can be 
uh, up and running and have instant access to all of these. If you're really serious about making 2017 your best year ever and having someone there right alongside with you who has four decades of trading experience who uses these same techniques on a daily basis, this is a great, great offer you have to take advantage of. Look at your trading this past year. Is it anywhere near what you wanted it to be? This is a tremendous package. We have three of our best strategies. We have the Pet D and the Money Management course for only $34.95. And you can also put down a small deposit and still be up and running with our payment plan. But remember, this is only available for the next 48 hours. Here's how to take advantage of that. Contact my sister site, Pro Trader Strategies. Remember, they market and uh, promote all of my courses and methods. You can call them directly, which I would probably suggest to do because uh, if you want to get a payment plan, which is probably something I would suggest everyone to do, uh, you can talk with uh, one of their trading consultants over the phone. They can set you up as soon as possible and you can be up and running and have instant access. Call them directly at area code 310-598-6677. There's no obligation. You can ask them any more questions you like. And if you'd like to go directly to the sign up page, you see that link at the very bottom of the page, but it's not a live link. And I believe they have posted a live link on the chat box. If you look at the GoToWebinar page on the far right, under the chat box column, uh, they have uh, a live link posted there. So you can just click that on, it will take you right to the sign up page for the $34.95 special offer, and you'll have instant access. Uh, once again, I would most likely call up. Pro Trader Strategies and ask, you know, put down a small deposit and you can be up and running just the same way you would uh, with the with the one lump sum. And once again, there's no obligation, but they can help you out. And remember, you only have 48 hours. If you've, you know, at come to the, the last draw with your trading, if you're, if you're really depressed and frustrated with it, I know what you're going through. I was there myself. Uh, my mentors, who were specialists themselves. They had been trading about 40 years each. These were two gentlemen on the trading floor. They saw how desperate and how frustrated I was. They taught me all of these things that are in the courses. So, you know, I am your personal mentor. I'm passing all the same information to you, the things that I use on a daily basis. These are the things that turn my trading around. I've been trading for 40 years, and I believe it's because of these simple things that are in the courses that have allowed me and sustained me for four decades. This is what I want to do to you. So, Please contact them as soon as possible because, once again, this offer is only good for 48 hours. Now, I want to thank you all for holding off on any questions. I promised you the last 10 or 15 minutes. So let me open up the question and answer box, and I'll answer the questions you have. Uh, Claire asked, Steve, what was question number two? Okay, uh, let's see. Well, I'll just review question number one so I can remember. Question one is, am I on the right side of the market? That's where you add the 50-period moving average. And question number two is, where do I place my stop? Extremely important. Remember, you must know this before you enter a trade. And most people, I know it may be surprising to some, most of you, but uh, trust me, the majority of traders don't even ask themselves this once they're in a trade. They go to a chat room or trading room and someone was touting some stock or some future and they get so excited, the minute it opens, they just buy it or sell it. They have no idea where to get out. They have no idea where to you know, place a stop and they have no idea how to protect themselves. But it's that's the the uh, the course when you uh, a course of action when you follow someone else. This is why we're trying to put the power in your hands. Once you have this information, once you know and work with someone who teaching you this on a you know a mentoring type basis, you'll feel confident in making your own decisions. And uh, it's amazing how many traders we 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 have. Once again, in over 110 countries in virtually every state in the United States. We have traders who've been trading, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or maybe traders have been trading 10 years and they tell us on a daily basis, this is the very first time I've ever been consistent in trading. I feel confident. And it's mainly because not because we have some magic secret formula. It's because you're making your own decisions for the first time and you're trading what, what makes you feel comfortable. All right. If there's one thing I've learned in 40 years is that no two traders should ever trade alike. I'm going to say that again. No two traders should ever trade alike. I know that goes against what most of you have been taught, and, but if you, you know, go to a, a signal page uh, that you pay for signals, daily signal service, or you go to a, a chat room that tells you what to buy or sell, in my opinion, it's a recipe for disaster because you shouldn't be trading the same way someone else is. You should be making your own decisions based off what you've learned. 
And so if you really want to come on board to that, uh, you know, road to consistency, we, we have the information uh, to teach you. OK. Uh, let's see. Sandu is asking, do we check the overall market? Which way the market is going? Well, I would say, you know, it's good to have that in the back of your head, uh, Sandu. But I would say all you have to do is look at where the price is relatively to the 50 period moving average. That's all you have to do. The last couple of weeks had price been above or below. OK, and so many people were saying prior to the election, boy, Steve, uh, you know, this market, uh, depending on the election, is either going to go straight up or straight down. Uh, what do you think? And I said, listen, I, I don't care about the election. I don't care who wins. I don't care what the economic news is. Ask yourself, where is price on the S&P 500 in relation to the 50 period moving average? Obviously, it was above. So the overall trend is up. Secondly, I would say, what color is the Pet D? And the Pet D is being green going back months. So, so I don't need to know anything else. There's no way I'm going to be selling anything. Now, if things change and we're below the 50 and the Pet D is turning red, well, sure, I'll, I'll be a seller. But until that happens, we don't, you don't have to overcomplicate the trading. There's nothing. You don't have to look at earnings, in my opinion. If you want to, that's fine. I'm not telling you how to trade. I'm just saying it's not required. You don't need to look at economic numbers that come out on a daily basis. It's silly. I don't. I stopped looking at that 40 years ago and I'm still here. So that must be uh, something working there that you're seeing that boy. The thing is, is most people are afraid to let go of that and, and do that, you know, leap of faith. But once you do, you'll get onto that road to consistency. Uh, hi, let's see. Uh, Richard is asking, hi, before I try this, can you get me the setup free ninja trader chart? Uh, Let's see, uh, for, uh, let's see, I love your software, but uh, the Thinkorswim can be a bugger for us rookies. Yes, I understand. I know Think Thinkorswim is a, a little bit more uh, uh, high end. It's a great platform. Uh, they uh, allow us to use their data, but they don't allow us to use their actual charts, but that's okay. Uh, we set you up free of charge with a NinjaTrader platform. And it's some of our students even like that better than think or swim. And our tech support does it free of charge. In fact, they do it in a matter of minutes for you and everything works great on that. So while you are using the think or swim data, which they allow us to use, they say they're more than welcome to use it. You don't have to pay for any data either. It's coming right from your think or swim if you happen to have that. And it's a, it's a great, great uh, addition. So we can do that for you uh, really well. Okay. Uh, Richard is asking once again, how long does this last? This is only going to the, the the setup only takes the two minutes. But remember, this offer is only going to be for 48 uh, 48 hours. So if you want, Richard, if you want to take advantage of uh, the discount and the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, small deposit in terms of uh, uh, the uh, it seems to have lost my mind the, the small deposit I should say uh, the uh, amount that you want to pay, all you have to do is is call them uh, Pro Trader Strategies. In fact. I don't know why I'm, I'm losing that word. That is uh, what well, the word I was looking for was right here. Payment plan. That's what I'm looking for. Payment plans. If you were interested in the payment plan, remember, that's only going to be for the next 48 hours. Let me go back to the questions again. OK, Faye is saying, why use the simple moving average instead of the uh, exponential moving average? It's a great question, Faye. Uh, there I don't want you to think that this is something that's like magic, that it, it, it has to be the 50. It's not so much the 50 period moving average that is important. It's the concept that is important. It's the concept of only taking buy signals that are above that 50. So if you feel more comfortable using the exponential, that's fine. My experience, once again, I'm not telling you how to trade. My experience, the 50 works the best because our concepts are, our philosophy is not to, to overcomplicate our trading. We want to keep things as simple as possible. So I don't want to be using a 20 period for intraday, uh, 100 for daily, and a 200 for monthly or weekly charts. The 50 works the best. The 50 period simple moving average works the best in all these markets. And then I'll go to the futures, intraday, futures trading, tick charts, same thing. So I know that the 50 period simple moving average works the best and can transfer over onto any market, any time frame with ease. So that's why I like it. Sometimes I'll use the exponential, I'll, I'll apply it, and it looks great in one chart. Then I go to a different chart, a different time frame. It's not so good anymore. But the 50 always gives me that consistency. So that's why I like it. If you 
just have to use an exponential, that's fine. But I would really roughly stay around that 50 uh, uh, time frame, okay? Uh, let's say Neil says, uh, I've used stops I thought were well-placed with reasonable cushion and seen the stock drop to the stop price and bounce right back, okay? Do those in the business have the techniques to depress the price where they can uh, grab the stock for an immediate gain? Neil. Neil, this is probably one of the biggest urban myths I've ever seen. But, you know, only if you are an institution where you have, let's say, a large stop of maybe a half a million shares in there, uh, some type of order, will they uh, lower prices? The specialist on the floor does not have enough money to draw the price down. There's, he doesn't have enough uh, power to do that. Usually what would happen is, uh, you know, there would be a lot of institutions that would do that. But, it, you know, it, it, for the regular trader like you and I that trades 500, 1,000 shares, maybe even 10,000 shares, that's not big enough. There are big traders involved here. I used to work on the floor some 40 years ago. And, you know, I'd have orders in my book for 100,000 shares and price didn't go down to that. I mean, that was still too small for some of the big traders. So I can only think now some 40 years later, you know, no one's going to be interested in 1,000 shares or 500 shares. So it, it, it really is an urban myth. Does it happen once in a while? Yes, I'd probably say maybe 1% or 2% of the time. But it's just a coincidence. It's just a, it's a type of thing where you see it and you say, boy, they're out to get me. You know, I, I really have found no consistency in that way of thinking. I think what's more important is, is probably your, your stop placement is faulty. Once again, we offer six different stop placements, basic stop placements, as well as uh, ways to track. We offer aggressive stop placements, conservative stop placements. So, uh, you know, we, we offer techniques that are even so aggressive that you have to wait for the trade unfold to enter your first stop. These are for more advanced traders, but we have lots of different ways to do that. You can use the pet D as well as a stop placement. So there's lots of different ideas and techniques, okay? Uh, Vic says, how do you detect a trend is changing on, say, a one-hour chart? Well, the first thing I do is look for the overall trend, Vic. Same thing again. It's not... Uh, rocket science. I apply the 50 period moving average. So the overall trend is telling me if we're above that the overall trend is up. If we are below, the overall trend is down. All right. So go back and look at that hour chart you're looking at. And that will tell you. Now, if it starts to change, if you have the pet D, the pet D will give you an early warning. So let's say price is below. Uh, the market has sold off rather sharply today. Okay. So let's say I didn't look at the hourly chart. I was looking at a smaller time frame. But let's say we looked at the hourly chart and then were, price was well below the 50 period moving average. All right, so the overall trend is down. Now let's say we start to bounce up today. Now, if you have the pet D, the pet D will turn green before we are above the 50 period. Why? Because the pet D is designed for the short term trend, not the overall trend, the short term. It's very sensitive. So that can give you an early warning, not telling you to get in, but let's say you were short. Well, that will tell you maybe I should be getting out or looking to get out or use that as my stop. Or maybe if you're uh, uh, thinking about going short, you're thinking, well, you know, I want the pet D to confirm my short. And in order to confirm it, it has to be red. So you'll wait for the very first red bar to get back in. So lots of different ways to trade it. Really simple though, it makes it easy. And as you notice, Everything is relying and, and on the market, okay, because the pet D just translates what the market wants to do. You notice I didn't say, well, we look at the institutions to see what they're doing, and then uh, we have to see if volume uh, ticks up. Then, you know, these are all outside sources that have shown no levels of consistency. Trust me, I've tried them. I've taken courses on them. I spent thousands. You'd be, you'd be embarrassed if you knew the amount of money I spent when I was frustrated when I was discouraged, trying to find the, the miracle cure, and it did none of that worked. So, you know, if it works so well, if these things, support and resistance, Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, volume, uh, institutional trading, if these things work so great, then why aren't more traders successful? It's been estimated upwards of 80% of all traders fail. It's because there's no consistency in those methods. There, sure, there are probably some traders who do very well, but they're probably 1% or 2% of all traders. And lastly, it's because you're trying to mimic someone else's style. You have to trade your own way. You have to make your own decisions. Once again, I'm, not, I'm your mentor. I'm not telling you what to buy or sell. So many of our students love what I, uh, I teach them, and they say, okay, Steve, so, so tell me, what do I buy? I say, no, that's your decision. I'm not, I'm not here. You know, A good mentor doesn't trade for you. He teaches you how to trade. 
So that's what I'm trying to do with all of our students, okay? All right, let's see here. Another uh, question. Hi, sir. I'm an India broker not using MT4 or uh, Nua to our software in India. Uh, how do I add the pet D? Uh, well, as you see here, uh, we can help you. Uh, you can set you up uh, with whatever market you trade. I don't know if you trade U.S. stocks or Indian market. I would contact ProTrader Strategies because we have a number of uh, uh, students and members of ours who are in India. So uh, you can uh, contact ProTrader Strategies. That's their department because they help you with all that setup and tech support. I'm just the educational side of the company. So uh, contact them. They'll be able to help you, and, and you can be up and running, uh, you know, with instant access as soon as possible, okay? Okay, Gwen asks, uh, would you stay out of a trade that is above the 50-period uh, DMA? I, I assume that's the displacement of an average on the daily, but below on the weekly. It's a very good question. Uh, a lot of traders, first of all, just to explain that, uh, a lot of traders like to look at different time frames to discern what to do. So in other words, they will look at a weekly time frame to find out what to do on the daily. So if you're in a downtrend on the weekly, but in an uptrend on the daily, well, then those two, tr uh, uh, those two methods are out of sync and you shouldn't take the setup until they're both in sync, okay? That's the conventional wisdom. Uh, not, once again, I'm not saying this to be condescending or arrogant, but in my 40 years of trading, I have found no consistency in this technique. In fact, I tried to use this technique 40 years ago. The only thing it did for me, it's the only purpose it served was to keep me out of good trades. Because while I was waiting for things to match up in both time frames, I missed a great trade. <coughs> so as our philosophy is not to tell you how to trade, if you feel that you must use this technique, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Is it required in my courses? Absolutely not. We want to keep things simple. We do not require you to look at two different time frames. In my opinion, there's no, there's no consistency in that. and it, it, it serves no purpose. If you're trading a daily bar chart, that's all you need to look at. Keep it simple. Okay. If you're trading a five-minute chart, that's all you need to look at. You don't need to look at a different time frame. Look at the 50 period moving average and the pet D and you'll be okay. All right. That uh, Once again, but if you feel that you need to look at these things, once I don't look at any news, I've never looked at news. I, I don't look at that. I don't look at volume. I don't look at all these uh, convoluted logic uh, things that people rely on and I'm still here. Okay. If you feel you must, then by all means, go ahead. I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that. But it's up to you. Your level of consistency, in, in our opinion, will be much lower than the students who don't use those things. Okay? It's up to you. Uh, these are all great questions. So it, it, it appears like we have some really skilled traders here, and I, and I appreciate all your questions. You know, as we're getting ready to close, once again, this offer, which is uh, probably one of our best offers ever, you're getting, you're getting everything, really. You're getting the pet D, which by itself, is just a, such a powerful tool. I mean, uh, it, if I were telling a person to get one thing, I would say probably get the Pet D, okay? But you're getting that. For the price of the Pet D, we're also throwing in three of our best strategies in terms of consistency. These are great, great strategies. But we're not stopping there. We're also throwing in a full money management course, which is has tons of information about management and is, is a great, great course in and of itself. We're throwing all this in. This would cost, you know, over $10,000, I believe. We would normally discount it to about $8,000. We're offering it down to $34.95. And on top of that, for the next two days only, you can be up and running with a small deposit, a payment plan. So it's a great, great deal. I think the most important thing about this is that I'm going to be right there with you every step of the way. I don't know if a lot of other webinars and educators can say they'll be there with you. You have 40 years of experience of someone using these exact same things, okay? So I'm your personal mentor for, for four decades. I've been using these things in my personal trading. I don't want you to trade like me. I'm not going to say this is the way you must trade. I'm going to teach you all this stuff. Go back and look at 2016. Ask yourself, was it anywhere near you thought it was going to be at the beginning of the year? In January, you probably had all these hopes and dreams. Here it is, the last week of trading in, in December. Are you anywhere near them? I can almost you know, guarantee you're not. And that's okay. The majority of traders fall into the same trap. If you really are serious about starting 2017 in the right direction, and then hopefully a year from today, you'll be able to look back and go, boy, that was the best decision I ever made. I'm, I'm finally where I want to be. This is your best bet. Okay, come on board. I'll be there with you every step of the way as your personal mentor. Okay. 
Once again, contact Pro Trader Strategies. No obligation required. They can answer any question you have, but remember, you only have two days to take advantage of this great, great special offer, okay? In closing, I want to say thank you so much for attending, and if you've attended my presentations in the past, I wish you all a great, prosperous, and healthy new year, but most especially, I look forward to each and every one of you becoming students of mine at Specialist Trading. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.